my name is Nick, and this is my channel where I talk about scary stuff. Welcome to my birthday party. Aren't you so glad you came? <coughs> oh! <laughs> and you know you're celebrating when you're drinking cheap champagne out of a plastic cup. Oh. I thought it would be fun to celebrate by going over my favorite birthday-themed horror films, specifically horror films with birthday parties in them, because that is fun to me. And I figure maybe it's your birthday, or you will have a birthday at some point, and you will want to throw on some good horror films, because what better day to celebrate our love for all things scary? We're focused on the death the rest of the year, it's about time we celebrate life, right? You know, while also being completely and utterly steeped in death. Happy birthday to you, whenever that may be. Before we get started with the top 10, I just wanted to say, if you're not already subscribed, well, this is the part of the video where I tell you to do that because I'm a starving artist out here on these mean streets and your one single subscription will change my life forever. Not really, but it's a cute story, right? Number 10 is Child's Play from 1988. The original. Andy is a little kid who just wants a good guy doll for his birthday. Unfortunately, his working class mother can only afford a used product that just so happens to be possessed by the spirit of serial killer Charles Lee Ray, also known as Chucky, and pint-sized murders ensue. You guys, this movie scared me so much as a kid, I actually thought Chucky was gonna crawl up my toilet and stab me in the tank. I've always been a fan of Child's Play, and I wasn't even planning on re-watching it for this video, but I did anyway, and I gotta say, I appreciate all the little plot machinations that really string this together, because it could be really easy to just look at it as ridiculous and silly, because it is, but it's played seriously enough that you're willing to go along with all of the mumbo jumbo happening on screen. And if you're looking to watch Child's Play or rewatch it, right now it's on Amazon Prime. Everyone has a birthday they'll always remember. Can we open my presents now, Mommy? A good guy! I knew it! Number nine is Allison's Birthday, a late 70s exploitation flick about teenage girl Allison, who was warned during a spooky seance that shit will go down on her 19th birthday. And then a couple years later, it does. This is one of those movies that I'm gonna start referring to as a one-sentence horror story in that I could spoil the entire hour and a half movie in one sentence with It's Allison's Birthday and this happens. And I'll admit that it took me three views to get through this film because I kept falling asleep, but once I got to the end, it totally clicked for me. I'm assuming this is going to be the one movie that no one actually watches. It is right here on YouTube. I can't find it streaming anywhere in better quality, but you can watch it for free on YouTube if you want to. It's slow and simple and I'm sure won't be for many people, but if you're into a cult horror and that sounds like a road you're willing to go down, well, Allison's birthday is very Wicker Man. <laughs> Number 8 is Sisters, a 70s thriller from Brian De Palma starring Margot Kidder as a woman who is out on a date on the night before her birthday which she shares with her twin sister. The next day, a small time reporter tries to convince the police that she's seen a murder in the apartment across from hers even though nothing is as it seems. This is one I really don't want to spoil for you guys so I would say if you have any interest, do not look up any synopsis or blurb or anything on your way to watching this movie because truly like every poster spoils it. But I do want to give you a good idea of what kind of viewing experience you're in for with Sisters. It starts out kind of like a romantic comedy that then shifts into this murder investigation and then it becomes a medical thriller. I love a movie that can change genres and morph throughout its story that it's telling and that's not very easy to pull off. I mean this is not De Palma's best and it has a really negative view of anyone who is non-able-bodied but that aside I do think there is a really interesting story at the heart of this movie. If that sounds like something you can get into, Sisters is currently on HBO Max, and there's also a remake, and that's on AMC+, Plus. but don't watch it. It is easily one of the worst movies I've ever seen, unless that sounds like it's up your alley, in which case, dive right in. No, I can remember. Go back, try. Remember. He's a freak! freak. He's a freak! Sisters. 
Number 7 is Sweet 16, an 80s slasher about teen girl Melissa who is new to a small town in Texas where she just wants to fit in. Turns out, all the guys who try to hook up with her wind up stabbed to death. With Melissa's 16th birthday approaching, will the killer be caught before she becomes the next victim? Okay, let me get all the way into Sweet 16, because this is not the best movie, and I can't fully defend it. This is certainly not the hill that I'm going to die on, but I rewatched it recently because I wanted to make sure that it was suitable for this list, and I was pleasantly surprised because I thought it was a lot worse than it actually is. And again, not good. This movie touches on racism, bullying, feminism, slut shaming, a lot that it does not handle properly. However, I would argue that at the center of it, the message that it's trying to convey does hold up. I'd say I don't want to spoil the movie, but it's pretty laid out for you throughout the entire film. And what I would say is this movie is really a combination of two things and kind of how a woman is sort of rebelling against the way society sexualizes her, even though it's also totally exploiting this young woman by making the entire movie about this 15-year-old sex life. But at the same time, I think that's kind of the point. And then how that young woman capitalizes on racial prejudices in order to get away with murder, basically. Again, not good. However, I do think there's a kernel of something interesting there that I would like to see better explored in a more modern film. If you're into slasher fun like me, you can find sweet. 16 on Tubi. You know, Melissa, you like to make up stories, don't you? You like the attention that they get you. Well, this time your little story killed someone. Number six is Happy Death Day. This horror comedy twist on the time loop film follows Jessica Roth's tree, a college student who was murdered on her birthday, only to find herself reliving the day over and over again. With each new attempt, she must figure out who her killer is before her time is up. I personally credit Happy Death Day for Hollywood trying to make anything into a time loop film. I'm sorry, it's played out, it's done. Except I love it here. I didn't even think that Happy Death Day would be rewatchable, but it's surprising. Surprisingly is. This movie is totally made by Jessica Roth's lead performance in Christopher Landon's hilarious direction. I regularly comment on the fact that I'm very picky with horror comedies, but this is definitely one of my favorites. It isn't technically a slasher because we only have like one victim dying a bunch, but it has the energy of a slasher infused with a super fun teen comedy. I can't find it streaming anywhere, but who cares? It's worth the <laughs> I can't find Happy Death Day on any streaming services right now, but shit, this movie is worth buying. I did it! Woo! All units, we've got a one eight seven. Number 5 is Friday the 13th, the 80s slasher to end all 80s slashers. You know Friday the 13th, the one about a group of camp counselors setting up for summer when a murderer begins picking them off in increasingly gruesome fashion. I love this basic little fright fest, if you haven't heard me say it already. Friday the 13th is kind of my favorite horror film. I mean, I have it tied with like a few others because how can you not have a top five? Who wants one favorite when you can have a top five? Well, it's of course trying to profit off of the non-existent holiday of Friday the 13th. This is also Jason's birthday and we can't not celebrate Jason's birthday. You see, Jason was my son and today is his birthday. But I'd also like to point out Friday the 13th Part 7, because that one is about a group of young people out in the woods to celebrate a birthday party when Jason comes slashing. It's also the one with the psychic chick who basically kicks his ass, and I love it. Friday the 13th Part 7 is probably considered one of the worst of them by most people, but it is so fun and ridiculous, that's like the secret recipe for me. Come on. This is some birthday. It's gonna be a great birthday. Number four is Madhouse, an 80s slasher about a woman named Julia who has a deformed twin sister in a mental hospital. Shortly before their birthday approaches, the twisted sister escapes, leaving Julia to fear for her life as the bodies begin to pile up around her. While it does play into the very basic entire trope of some crazy person breaking out of the loony bin to go commit murders, 
The female villain in this movie is so over the top, I'm kind of okay with it. And she has this dog who straight up rips people's throats out. It's hilarious. She's like an evil magic dog. You don't see that a whole lot. And I love that our main character, Julia, lives in this boarding house and it ends up being taken over by the killers and they lock it all up and people are just trapped in there and it's turned into a madhouse. I think that's super fun. Madhouse is known by most as a video nasty, which if you don't know what that is, there were a bunch of movies from the late 70s and the early 80s that were basically just banned in the UK they were like nope so of course now we're like give that to me thank you Madhouse is interesting in that it's bordering on being just plain bad while also being a fun 80s slasher because like all of the character interactions and plot progressions are pretty much based off of horror movie logic like at one point the boyfriend of our heroine goes to her friend and is just like hey can you go to the Madhouse just stay with her overnight basically just so we can sell up an extra kill to go on the list it's something else but if you're looking to watch it you can find madhouse on tubi I Number three is Stitches, a British horror comedy slasher about a birthday clown named Stitches who dies after a prank goes wrong at a child's birthday party. Years later, he returns from the grave as that kid becomes a teenager to kill off all of the kids in wild and wacky ways. Again, horror comedies, not my favorite. In fact, I wasn't even the biggest fan of this movie the first time I watched it, but a friend made me rewatch it because he wanted to show me one of the kills that I had forgotten about in it. and. It was really fun on rewatch. I gotta say, Stitches is quite the surprise. And it's available on Amazon Prime if you're looking to watch it. You have a head in your throat. Are you trying to be funny? But if you're still into killer birthday clowns, might I throw you a bonus recommendation? Clown is about a man who puts on a cursed clown costume for his son's birthday, only to find himself being transformed into the costume itself. This is a modern slasher that is brutal and creepy, and I couldn't help but throw it on the list. If you're looking to watch Clown, right now it's on Tubi. What are you doing down there, Daddy? Come downstairs. I want to see my number one birthday boy. Number two is Bloody Birthday, another 80s slasher, and no, we're not done. Bloody Birthday is a batshit crazy movie about three kids who go on a murderous rampage on their 10th birthdays. That may sound simple enough and maybe even lame, but trust me, you're not prepared for how ridiculous this movie gets. Sure, it has all the bad staples, including plenty of gratuitous nudity, but Bloody Birthday plays out like no other slasher, and I can't can't even define how bizarre this movie is. And that's what I love about Bloody Birthday. It's just its own movie. You can say that it's like a lot of other 80s slashers, but honestly, I don't think it's like any other 80s slasher. Once again, Tubi is the MVP because that's where you can watch Bloody Birthday. Bloody Birthday, a terrifying journey into the bazaar. Will you get out alive? Number one is Happy Birthday to Me. I know, of course, duh. Virginia is a member of the coolest clique at her prep school, the Top Ten, but as she gets closer to her birthday, her friends are killed off around her in mysterious and violent ways. Happy Birthday to Me sounds like all of the 80s slashers, but what I appreciate about this one is that it takes its time with its characters and its story, like they're actually is some story to this one. As things play out and we get into the whole backstory with the mother and the structure of the town they're living in and everything, I really enjoy that. And while the killer might be absolutely ridiculous and I can't fully say that I buy it, I'm still into it. I'd argue that Happy Birthday to Me is good, actually. I'd put it up there with My Bloody Valentine as one of the best 80s slashers we got. Unfortunately, I can't find this streaming anywhere, but, I mean, Dead Meat just did a kill count for it recently, so, I mean, there you go. Because of the bizarre nature of this birthday party, pray you are not invited. You guys know I can't help but throw out a bad movie recommendation, and I really can't help myself with this one. My Super Psycho Sweet 16 is a TV movie from the late 2000s that's a slasher spin on MTV's reality show My Super Sweet 16. Basically, some teen rich bitch is throwing a huge party at a roller rink for some reason, and then a killer shows up. Does anyone else even know that this exists? Madison's party is about to go from super to psycho. Chloe? Ah! Ah! You 
That is my list of my favorite birthday horror films. Let me know which ones you guys loved and which ones you hated. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it as always. I'm going to have a full list of my top 10 and honorable mentions in the description box in case you ever want to return to this, maybe make your own list. Let me know if there are any in the comments that you think I should include. Oh hey, look who's popping back on camera on the actual day of my birth wearing the shirt I wore yesterday. You can see the balloon have lost their luster but I totally forgot to record the bit where I accept a birthday cake from all of the internet you shouldn't have no one should have I really don't like cake this is truly wasteful and there's to world peace are you not supposed to say it out loud well good luck world peace now it just smells like shit in here thank you guys so much especially if you made it all the way to the very end of this video i know it was a lot longer than it needed to be but i wanted to have fun with this one let me know if there are any other different themes that you want to see me cover in a different top 10 horror list you can follow me on instagram and letterbox to see more of what i'm watching and to get more movie recommendations that's it for this video but I won't stop you from watching another. I spent five bucks on this grocery store birthday cake just to throw it out, so it goes in the video.